Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the structure of DNA. And once we talk about how the molecule that contains all your genetic instructions is made, we can talk a little bit about how it replicates or mistakes that can happen in replication that cause mutations. So the first thing you're going to want to do today is go to Mr. Oates' website. Um, if you're in my class, you want to go first to our website and, and check for any announcements and then go here. On Mr. Oates' website, you're going to go over to the Advanced Biology tab, scroll down to DNA. Once you get to the DNA unit, you want to scroll down and open up the structure notes. These will be for you today as I walk you through the video. Um, and then the PowerPoint is also right below if you want to go access it without me talking to you. Um, you could do this through view for a test or uh, if you want to read and then go back and clarify some things. So when you open up DNA structure notes, just a reminder, you have to click in this upper left hand corner here, uh, click use this template, and that converts the notes into your document now. Um, you can see it's saved under science, for me, my Google account is sciencewithtoolers.com. So, um, you know, you this becomes your own document that you can work on. I suggest you read through this, uh, know what is going to be expected for you to take away from this uh, video, but don't try and fill it out while I'm talking because that would just be too much to do. So once you open these, you've read them, and uh, you know what's going to be expected of you, let's talk a little bit about the structure. Oops. All right. So um, the structure of DNA is a really, how we came to understand it is a really interesting story um, in its own. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that after we're done. But it was basically um, put together by Rosalind Franklin here and then Watson and Crick. Um, and like all most great discoveries in science, it was put together by many different people figuring out little pieces. But DNA... Um, is a molecule that stores uh, genetic instructions that make you you. And then those instructions get turned into uh, different molecules, mostly proteins, and, and proteins are what make up this stuff of you. So when I look at you and I look at your hair and I look at your skin, and you know, um, a lot of that is protein that was coded for in your genetic instructions or your DNA. Okay, so it's the molecule that passes along information, genetic information. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what makes up um, the DNA molecule. Uh, I like to think of the DNA molecule as a Lego castle. So when I was a little girl, you could make a huge structure out of individual little Legos that you stack together. So if the DNA molecule shown here is basically the Lego castle, then each little Lego is what I call a nucleotide. Okay. So the nucleotide has um, different parts. Uh, it has a phosphate group connected to a deoxyribose sugar, which is the D in DNA. And then one of four different types of nitrogen bases are attached to that deoxyribose sugar. And this is a nucleotide. This is one Lego, and it takes many, many of these stacked up over um, one another to create the DNA molecule. So a repeating unit that is similar or the same is a monomer, and then the DNA molecule is what we call a polymer, meaning poly, many units that are the same. So each nucleotide has these three parts, phosphate, sugar, and a base. So those bases can be four different molecules. They can be adenine, guanine, thymine, or cytosine. And um, a lot of times these are just truncated to be called by their letters. So we're going to say, you know, you're going to take an A to a T. That means A and T, adenine and thymine. Okay. And you'll notice that the structure of adenine and guanine or A and G is very similar. And thymine and cytosine is very similar. Um, they are like uh, molecules. And so they pair up with... Um, less like molecules. So adenine and thymine will pair up together and guanine and cytosine will pair up together. Um, I always write this off to the side here, you guys. So whenever you're getting used to this, you're gonna write G, C on your paper and then A, T. 
And so if you do this, the, this can kind of help you to remember that. Um, the fact that adenine and thymine always pair up, and guanine and cytosine always pair up, is because they're complementary base pairs. Okay. And then um, they're held together here in the middle. You can see these dashed lines. Those are hydrogen bonds. Um, hydrogen bonds are kind of a special type of um, bond in that it's strong enough to hold the molecule together, but it's weak enough that it can be broken easily without too much um, added energy so that the molecule can be replicated. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You'll see the bases, or the base part of the nucleotide is in the middle, held together by hydrogen bonds. And then um, the phosphates and the sugars are the backside, okay? So you'll see nucleotides on both sides. You have a sugar phosphate backbone right here with the nitrogen base in the middle. And then on the opposite side, you have a sugar phosphate base um, with, a, uh, with a nitrogen base in the middle. This is kind of like a ladder. So you take a ladder and on one side where you put your hand, that's where the sugar phosphate backbone is. And on the other side, there's another sugar phosphate backbone. And in the middle are complementary base pairs or nitrogen bases going to be adenine and thymine or it's going to be cytosine and guanine and then you take that ladder and you're going to twist it into what we call the double helix okay so again those hydrogen bonds in the middle are special weak bonds and that twisted shape we call the double helix so there's nucleotides or little legos monomer Legos on both sides of the DNA molecule. Take a second, we're not going to do the think pair share right now, but take a second to uh, pause this video and ask yourself, what are the three parts of the nucleotide and how do they join together to create the entire DNA molecule? What does that look like? I'll take a second here so that you can um, answer this question. Okay, hopefully you had a minute to think about that. Three parts of the nucleotide, phosphate, sugar, and a base. The sugar is deoxyribose. And they join together by stacking up, um, and they're held, they, um, two sides of nucleotides are held together by hydrogen bonds in the middle of the DNA molecule. So let's keep going here. The structure of DNA was actually, if you take that twisted ladder, and you look down the middle of it, um, what you would see is all the bases, the nitrogen bases in the middle. And that's what Rosalind Franklin saw here in her pictures. Um, she was one of many scientists working on um, the molecule that contained genetic instructions. And people were trying to figure out, after they realized DNA was what contains the instructions to be you, they were trying to figure out what, how it was made. And so Rosalind was creating these pictures uh, with some x-ray technology at the time. It was really advanced, but now it would seem pretty antiquated. She um, was able to see that the bases were in the middle and that it was probably, or that it was a helix or a spiral. Okay. Um, so if you remember that the nitrogen bases are in the middle held together by hydrogen bonds, Okay, and A and T always join together, and C and G always join together, then take a moment to think about what might that mean for how DNA copies itself. Because cells in your body are dying all the time, and you have to replace these with new cells that contain DNA. So, if your DNA has to constantly replicate itself or copy itself, how might the actual structure of the molecule help it do that job? Take a second, think about it, and I'll come back to you. Oops, sorry. So uh, next class we're going to talk about this, about how you can unwind um, the DNA molecule in little pieces along a, a big molecule. You can break those hydrogen bonds, and because you have either an A, T, C, or D on one side, and you know it pairs with it, that the fact that DNA has complementary base pairs in the middle actually determines how um, it replicates. So we'll talk about that in our next lecture. Right now I'm going to teach you a little song. And this song 
helps you to um, remember the structure of the DNA molecule. Okay, so I'll sing it and you follow along with the words and then there'll be opportunities for you to create additional lyrics and um, and teach it to somebody else. Now, uh, I, have, I can't take credit for the song. I didn't create it. I got it from a teacher um, a long time ago. Um, and uh, here it is. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> I have to practice and warm up a little bit. <clears throat> okay. It's to row, row, row your boat. If you don't know that, go ask somebody. You ready? Oh, it's no longer extra credit. You can just ignore that. We don't do extra credit in a proficiency class. There you go. <laughs> okay, ready? We love DNA made of nucleotides, sugar, phosphate, and a base bonded down one side. Adenine and thymine make a lovely pair. Cytosine without guanine would feel very bare. Now, you might laugh. But it had been a long time since I'd studied DNA when I took one of those fancy teacher tests. And I actually got through some test anxiety by sitting in my chair with a few hundred other people going, hmm, 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 and remembering the structure of DNA. So give it a try, rewind, replay, and teach it to somebody else. That's it. If you need extra help, go back and look at that PowerPoint, watch the video again, um, and make sure to complete your notes and post them to your blog.